on the day that Sherry's one true love, former Beatle and Wings frontman Paul McCartney, celebrates his 67th birthday. So happy birthday, Sir Paul. And desperately hoping he'll sing The Girl Is Mine uh, to her one of these days. It's Sherry Houston! <laughs> And the arrival of her mark, there'll be no more lonely nights for Carol Giffen. <laughs> now, Mary had a little lamb, but this one's got some very big lungs. It's Leslie Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> and guaranteeing that we'll all stand together for the next hour at least, it's me, Andrea McLean. And why not share your lunch with the lovely ladies in our loose lounge this afternoon? On the eve of Wimbledon, there's really only one woman we can talk tennis with, and that's former champion Virginia Wade. And they once outsold the Beatles in Japan. Here to tell us about hitting the road again are two members of the biggest sister act in pop, Bernie and Linda Nolan. <laughs> Coming up, as a senior judge gives a speech in Parliament drawing attention to what he calls the endless game of pass the partner in Britain, we're asking whether we should all stick with one imperfect relationship for the sake of society and for our children. But first, at a recent highbrow arts event, Culture Minister Barbara Follett was left well, rather red-faced when she tried to slip away unnoticed from a speech being given by Melvin Bragg. Now, on seeing her attempt an exit, he said, Barbara, not interested in what I have to say? No, seriously, don't worry, Barbara, you get off. And he waved her from the stage <laughs> to the amusement of the audience. All rather embarrassing. Um, but can we sympathise with Barbara for, for sloping off? Or is making an exit just as important to you as making a good entrance? Oh, absolutely, darling. I love a big exit. No way! <laughs> I love a big what entrance, surprise. darling. As long as it's big, I don't really mind, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'd always say, I would never do what she did. I mean, I would always say, if I was at a party, for instance, you know, I'd want to go up to the host and say, darling, it's been lovely, thank you, thank you. I mean, I'd want to know. I want them to know the diva had left the building. Okay. You know. So it's about you rather than them. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, if you're on a stage, though, seriously, and you're trying to make an exit in a big frock, that can be a bit of a nightmare. Okay. I mean, especially if you've got a train, for instance, you can walk up the back of your train and do a very nice Dick Emery, thank you very much, land on a tuba player's knee. Uh, or if you're going, you're, you're trying to make an exit left and you've yeah. got one of those really big, like what I call a hovercraft frock. David Emmanuel used to make me huge, great dresses, big skirts. And you kind of swish round like that to make your exit and you take the whole first section of the violin down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some music stands and some music. I mean, that's a lot of fun. I think, I think Malvin was rather rude, actually, to point out that she was leaving. She might have had the runs or something. <laughs> Carol! Only you, you, you could think you of know, that. But the thing is, I mean, you, uh, to be on the stage while someone's speaking and yeah. to just have to get up to leave, you know, we know it's happened on this show, Sherry, remember? Yes, no, actually, you did, yes. You, did. you had oh, to get no. up and no, leave. You had a nosebleed. I had a nosebleed and I had to make a quick... It's true. It's true. So, so you, you don't thought know. thought I was rude, couldn't you? Exactly, oh, but... I think she got a diary all mixed up. I oh, no, no, she no. To I, shoot a I am the total opposite of you, though. Believe it or not, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. In so many ways, I don't like. I don't like to draw attention to myself if I'm leaving somewhere, especially if I'm a bit bored and I'm leaving early. <laughs> I don't! I tell you what, what the number of times I've left a party or, or, or a function or anything and I've not told anyone I've le I'm leaving, I'll just, I'll just leave quietly and then hope they won't miss me. They never do. You tend to not say anything, just go, Yeah. We know what I'm talking about you. That's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard you make. I never tell people if I'm going to leave. I sneak you out never and they never... tell people you're going to leave because you've got your head in a tuna steak. <laughs> Wow. Well, you're on the floor. The last time I was with her, which was in Spain, the only that's time. where she was, was like that. <laughs> and I said, I had to pick her up. You yeah. don't even remember going out to the restaurant. I had to get you down a stone stairs. I had to get her into a taxi. She couldn't even see the taxi. <laughs> she didn't even remember it. Not true. I, oh, it's not <laughs> true. It's I didn't say goodbye to anyone that, that night, no. you're right, because I couldn't speak. So, <laughs> 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 can, I just, can I just add that uh, that is not the normal way it, uh, that I behave, because Sherry and I have only really been out like that a Once, couple of okay. times, and okay, it might have happened both times, but you know. <laughs> she was unlucky. <laughs> I, 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 
I've been carried, carried home once, and it was when I was a student. I bought, do you remember in the 80s, that spandex trousers? Remember those really, really tight, like Olivia Newton-John, those black shiny oh, trousers? No, no, people wear them now. Well, you know, but the, they're, they're younger now. Now, when I was sort of littler, um, I remember I, I bought a pair, but you know when you try them on the changing room and think, oh, yeah, I can do, oh, yeah, I can do this, and then you try them on to go out and think, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. So I got drunk before I left the house, which seemed like a really good idea, but it, all I can vaguely remember was dancing to... Um, Hawkwind, Silver Machine, on my own in the middle of a dance floor. Seemed like a really good idea at the time. And then kind of falling and then waking up the next morning, apparently I'd been carried home by friends. Oh. Yes. So you didn't say goodbye to anyone? I didn't say goodbye to no. anyone. I think a lot of people say goodbye to me as I was carted off the dance floor. <laughs> no, you were always very elegant though, Sherry. I can't imagine you making a rough ex exit, as it were. No, I don't. But I actually do remember though, this was a different kind of exit. I was, <laughs> I was with still with Ken at the time, I was in this restaurant, and he got very drunk, and we got back, and I got into the, uh, the apartment, and I thought, that's it, I'm leaving him, that's the end, I am going. So he fell asleep on the floor and was out, completely out. So I decided to go, packed my case, went to the telephone, and we were in Spain. So I, I said, and they went, por favor, and I went, what? And he went, por favor, and I went, um, can I have a taxi? And he went, por favor? And I said, no, I want a taxi. He said, donde? I went, what? And he went, Don, I said, Sherry. And he went, I didn't know it meant where. <laughs> and he kept going, Don, I kept going, Sherry. And he went, no, no, Don, they. And I went, Sherry, Sherry, please come and bring... And I had to... Because <laughs> I couldn't get the taxi. She didn't know where I was or who the hell I was. Obviously, thought I was some was mad woman. Was it the middle of the night? Yeah. You see, I did an exit from a relationship in the middle of the night. Yeah. Do you remember, I told you, I might have told you, you might remember this. I was engaged to this Greek guy. In fact, I wasn't engaged to him, but I agreed to marry him. So I went... <laughs> I left my job. That's a yeah, but, you know, they were, you know, it wasn't really. Like, anyway, uh, it only lasted like about twelve hours. Well, that's what you agreed to marry him. That's a long time. Because I left my job here and everything. It was uh, it was the early eighties. I was quite young, and um, I left this country. I went to live there. I took everything, packed up it, my flat, my job, everything. Got over there, and when he came to meet me, I, I looked at him, I thought, oh, I don't know, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, so I went over to where he lived, which was on the mainland in Greece, went to meet his mum, went to stay in his house and, and all this, but in the middle of the night, for some reason, I don't know, he was, he was restless, he'd got up and gone somewhere, and I thought, oh, this is it, this is my moment. So I got up in the middle of the night, literally packed my bag and ran, <gasps> literally ran away down to the port and got on the first ferry back to the island the next morning. <laughs> no. So he must have just woken up thinking, where's she gone? <laughs> <laughs> and this big heavy bag. It was before you had wheelie bags. So yeah. I was carrying this big heavy bag. And I was running like that. Going, oh, oh. But Carol, today, <laughs> live on <laughs> Oh, so imagine good. it. It's Stavros. Okay. <laughs>